Hello everyone. Um, today I will talk about a very useful web browser, uh, Systream. And so if you click the Systream website, you can see that this is a, a web server contain um, several useful tools. The first is the Systream analysis pipeline, which is based on, on Galaxy. The second is the Systream data browser, uh, which collect uh, the processed data from public chip seeker DNAS. Um, data from human and mouse. The third one is a Systrom cancer. Basically, um, it can even further predict uh, transcri transcription factor targets and enhance the profiles in cancer. So this is a specified um, sp uh, design for cancer study. The fourth one is a Systrom GOM. Basically, um, it web server for functional enrichment analysis for transcription factor bonding low side. The fifth uh, is a Systrom um, a data, a data browser toolkit, so we, which is uh, the complementary to Systrom uh, data browser. The last one is this uh, uh, bioinformatics tool developed to predict uh, um, the trans transcription of regulator of differential express or co-expressed gene sets. In today's lecture, I'll focus on Systrom data browser and uh, Systrom Go. Um, if you are interested in other modules, uh, you can further explore that. There's uh, a bunch of uh, rich documentation and a tutorial um, which can explain the module and uh, each function very clearly. So the first module we want to see today is the Systrom Data Browser. So basically you can click the visit site, you will jump into um, the Systrom uh, Data Browser. From here you can see that we have two species interested, one is hum human, another is mouse. And we have biological sources. So basically, this is uh, can consider different cell line, uh, different tissue. The third column is factors, because we're interested in studying epigenomics of different transcription factor, different histone modification. So we consider factors meaning consist of these two category. One category is uh, transcription factor. The second category is histone modification. And uh, so. Um, here, when you uh, see the results, you can see a big table. The first column is branch. The second column is the species, um, human and mouse. The third column is biological sources. For example, if from pillar cell line, uh, from um, this uh, tissue and from this organ, the transcription factor is BTAF1. The publication is from bioinformatics and uh, the quality control have um, six criteria. So if we put your mouse on that, you can see the first criteria is the sequence quality. The second criteria is the uh, big mapping quality. The third one is the PCR bottleneck coefficient. Uh, the fourth one is the uh, chip enrichment. Uh, the sixth one is the uh, um, fraction of reads in peaks. And the last one is the uh, regulatory regions. So um, if we tend to be Green, which it means uh, the criteria is good. Otherwise, if you read, which it means the data set that didn't meet to this criteria. So if we want to uh, pick one data set we are interested in study, probably you want to focus on data set with more green than red. And so here, um, we go through uh, the tutorial of um, uh, Systrom Data Browser and go the example one by one to see how it exactly works. Okay, so let's go to the tutorial. So basically you can click to the documentation of Systrom Data Browser and you can jump to this tutorial, very detailed tutorial. Um, I want to show uh, the tutorial. I think the tutorial is uh, already very clear. So I want to go through this tutorial to see how exactly Systrom Data Browser works. So uh, for the tutorial can here, we uh, can clearly basically contain words. Uh, the words can basically can help us to search the key um, biological sources or key uh, factors. For example, uh, I'm interested in leak transcription factor, so I click search. Okay, so uh, you can see that the table change. We can show all the transcription factor I'm interested in or leak across the human, mouse, across um, all biological sources and all publications. For example, you are only interested in MIC in human species. So you can choose the um, human sampling 
So basically, it can help the uh, milk across all the human species instead of mouse. So that is a uh, good feature. So we can uh, select the transient factor in interest data. Or I'm interested in um, for histomodification um, across all biological sources for human only. Then we can click search. Again, we can see this is a histone modification um, across the, both the human and mouse. So if we are only interested in human only or collect human, then we have a, a, this histone modification for human only. If we're interested in this histone modification for human and the two specific cell line, so probably uh, we can choose a cell line we're interested. For example, I just pick up the first one and we get to um, so uh, this is very interesting. So basically, we can have a combination of container world, uh, species, biologic sources. Um, and uh, in this container world, uh, you can type the biological sources you're interested in, or type the factors you're interested in. Because if we go back, we can see that um, clear section. So think about if we go back. Yeah, so if I go back, everything is all. Oh, so it shows everything. We can see that there's also too many biological sources if you uh, scroll down the bar. And uh, so it's very hard sometimes for you to choose the one you have, or you want, you want to search because it has a very long list. And the similar thing is to choose the factors. So the factors are too many factors. Um, maybe sometimes it's, it's hard for you to choose it either. So good thing is like you can type the factors or the cell lines you're interested. Uh, that is make your selection more clear. Okay, so for example, I'm interested in K562 cell line. Um, I'm interested in human only. So if I show all the data sets related to this cell line, but across all the factors. So if I, like I um, told before, I'm interested in make uh, transient factor only, so we type make. I have the make factors, but across all the biologic sources, all the cell lines, all the tissues. So this is very convenient. Um, a text box that you want to type something you want to search uh, in this box. Okay, so um, after I have all these uh, uh, boxes show up, so what I want to do in the next step. So if we see the tutorial only, we can see that um, you can select a data set to display results. So for example, I'm interested in uh, MIC in IPSC cell line. So I select the data set. So basically you can just uh, click the data set and you scroll down. You can see the detailed information of relevant uh, publication and the details. You can see this is a MIC study for the mouse and uh, you got a publication, um, publication in cell in 2017. And uh, the cell type in, uh, study is IPSC cell line. One good feature for um, system um, data browser is you can visualize the ChipSeq picks via two famous browser. One is the WashU browser, another UCSC browser. So if we click the WashU epigenomic browser, we jump to um, uh, this web page. Yeah, so here we can see that in this region, basically we didn't have the picks. Um, for uh, for the uh, for this mix uh, for the mix factors uh, in this uh, cell type, so we have to uh, jump to one uh, region so we can visualize this. And uh, if you want to get the region of ChipCPX, you can click the download download to my computer. Okay. Sometimes the browser want to. Verify we are not a robot. Before you can download that. Okay, this is straight, I guess. So this is a parameter. Um, you are a robot that is targeted to the server, so it gives you a simple mass, so it can, sometimes it happens for you to download the chipsec picks. Okay, so this is the uh, um, chipsec picks for processed for this data, uh, which is um, the maker for mouse, 
or uh, in IPS Excel 9. And uh, so how many pixels we have, so we can check. Uh, this is about uh, 34,000 pixels. And uh, if we want to visualize um, these pixels in uh, which browser, probably you want to select the region coordinate are interested. For example, crop almost on one and click go. Okay, so for here, uh, you clearly see this is a peak in this region. Um, so you can narrow down this region to say, okay, what is the label, what is the neighborhood uh, peak information for this peak? So this is very convenient, so we can actually interact to the processed data of the peaks, select and enrich the peaks, put it into what your genome browser, so can visualize every position in the genome, what is the enrichment of this MIG for the IPS cell now. So this is very useful to have some kind of interaction between um, visualization and for your processed peak list. So not only for WashU browser, you can also visualize uh, to our UCSAC browser. So we do this thing again. Yeah, so we jump to uh, 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 WashU. Uh, this is UCSAC browser. This is for the data sets processed, uh, and we can see the peaks uh, for this uh, genomic region from chromosome to row uh, between this region to this region, and we can uh, just uh, um, move with this position to see how uh, it, it is enriched across the whole genome every, for every position. I think this is a very useful um, tool, a tool that to do this kind of visualization. You can download uh, these pics to your own computer. You can play with that. And if you go down again, um, you can see uh, this is a, a quality control um, summary statistics. And uh, it includes uh, everything we previously mentioned. It says quality control. We have six uh, um, QC here. If the data set meet the quality control of the six criteria, we say the data set is of uh, good quality. And uh, which is, uh, this data set is good because it's tend to be all green. And you can see that the first criteria is the raw rate, the sequence median score, uh, reads the unique map. Uh, PCR bottleneck coefficient and so on and so forth. And uh, so if you clear this again, this is a, a quality control on motifs. You can see how many motifs are in reach um, for this chip uh, data set. Because this is the MIC uh, factor, of course, for the MIC uh, motif is very enriched here. And uh, the third one is got the top uh, putative target. Because they have a um, chip sequence, so we want to see um, what genes are regulated by the uh, microtransmission factor. So we have some kind of algorithm uh, behind the system uh, DB to calculate the putative targets of the genes regulated by um, MIC. So the first, uh, so it give a list and give a score uh, from the most uh, confident uh, genes to the least confident genes. And the way they are coordinated correspondingly, you can also visualize through the what you did browser or UCSC um, genome browser. I think this is a uh, um, very useful tool so if you want to study gene regulation between transient factor, histone modification, and other genes that are interested. So if we have experiment to have the genes have the transient factor, you want to do a quick check of what other people did for their corresponding studies, you can do a quick check. Um, in the system data browser to validate uh, your findings, or maybe have some new findings which is different from others. I think this is a very useful tool to verify existing findings and have some de novo findings. Uh, the last one is to check uh, a putative target. So basically, you can uh, select the gene, uh, for example, uh, for let's choose this gene, and we put it here. Yeah, it seems like there's no uh, attacked gene you can uh, select it. 
I think this is one only we can check it is go to the what's your epigenomic browser. It can show um, the region of the gene and the, the enrichment of the peaks around the gene. So uh, the third one is like you can batch a sample of the genome browser display. So which is in sometimes you want to um, have some comparison um, between different transmit factor or different um, uh, biological uh, contexts, uh, biological sources here. You want to choose a micro data set and do some um, uh, visualization. So this is very important. So let's do something here. Let's click this window and we'll go back again. Okay, so for example, we have MIC um, for IPSC cell 9. So we choose uh, this data set. And for example, we're also interested in um, polymic uh, for INCAP cell 9. So we'll click here. And uh, so we have two data set. We want to visualize the two data set, have some kind of comparison. So we click here, the wish you browser. Choose others to unclick this one clear section. So have some kind of warning that if the species are not consistent. Um, yeah, so this is we cannot um, compare mouse and human. We need to choose from have consistent species, for example, this one. And here we go. So that is uh, if we choose. Um, um, you can apply C S C cell nines for mouse, and you want to compare with IPSC uh, cell nines to LN and cap cell nines, but the species is different. Uh, it's like human, so you cannot um um so Citron data browser give a warning. You cannot do that comparison because um it restricts that to comparison with within species instead of um, cross species. So in that case, so we can only choose the data set for the same species but the different biological sources, or the same biological sources, but the different factors. So in this case, we want to see the same factors, but different biological sources. And we go to the worksheet browser and see how we, how we get it. So here we go. We have two, like we have two cell types. And uh, the first one we have is for, um, IPSC cell 9. The second one we have is for the MEL uh, progenitor cell 9s. And we can see that in some places uh, for this cell 9 is more enriched than this. So we can clearly see some kind of differential bonding events happens in some uh, transfer, transfer fact, uh, in some bonding node side. So this is very important if you want, want to study whether one transfer factor have different behavior in different biologic uh, sources, in different cell lines, in different organs. So um, to study the different gene regulation activity. So that is important if we can visualize uh, multiple cell lines uh, um, or multiple factors in multiple tracks. And uh, that is the important information. And uh, we also show the data quality here. And from the tutorial, also you can see uh, get a chip seek uh, putative targets and search interesting target. Um, but right now, I think yeah, sometimes it's uh, um, reflect very slow, so you probably want to tag type the word very in, in a slow manner. Otherwise, if you uh, type it too fast, it didn't show anything, yeah. So if, we, for example, you're interested in, uh, this is a MIG, right? We want to interest in MIG genes. And here we go, we'll click this gene. And we have the um, MIG score information, coordinate information, 
and uh, you can visualize through uh, WashU and the USS ECSC. The same information you can get from the uh, get top purity where our target is. So you have a lot of targets here, so you can also um, search for the gene you are interested in. However, in some cases, because this is, I think it's only reported for the top genes, you may not see the bottom genes. In that case, you probably want to use this functionality check uh, purity of target instead. Also, uh, from the online tutorial, they have some uh, detailed explanation why you want to see stream DB, what is in system DB, how to set it, uh, data analysis procedure, quality control, what is the detail meaning of the six quality control criteria, and uh, what is uh, if you have some running issues. I think you can read more details um, of this uh, FAQ to have more understanding about how to use these tools. Um, we go to the statistics, we can see um, with the year going, this uh, website actually is actively maintained by Dr. Shelley News Lab in from Harvard. Um, you can see the data set is still uh, increased year by year. So this is very good and uh, actively maintained uh, a website for you to use the most uh, updated epigenomic uh, information. Uh, right now it's almost a collect about 30,000 uh, 30, uh, data set from human and uh, mouse respectively. So this is a very great resource for you to use for your own uh, epigenetics study. And from this, see, you can, uh, this tool is uh, go, going to be very popular. But sometimes we want to download all the data set. We don't want to do the web server query because some um, people with more computational training want to have the big data set in their own computer to do some like, joint analysis. So in this case, um, you can have the functionality called batch download. However, you need to have some kind of registration about uh, your name, um, your lab PR institution email, have some interaction with uh, the lab to give some um, um, access, uh, accessibility uh, to the batch download, uh, um, uh, to, have a, uh, to give you the batch download. Uh, you cannot uh, just uh, download the, um, directly. You have some get some kind of approve. But I think you you, you can submit this uh, application and to see um, whether you can get approved or not. Whether your application can be justified. Okay, thank you. I think that is all for um, Systrom Data Browser. Uh, we have more. Uh, the second tool I want to discuss for Systrom is the Systrom Go. Uh, we will talk about it in the next session. Um, thank you, everyone.